All right, this week's Bible verse is going to be coming to y'all from 1 Peter 5, 8. It says, Be alert and of sober mind, your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. So, so, I'm, so folks, uh, since he, so be alert and of sound mind. The devil, he's looking for someone to, someone to devour. So let's go out there Friday night and be alert, be of sound mind, and don't get devoured because, uh, and devour basically means destroy, or wipe out, whatever, but let's not get wiped out. Let's go out there, do what we do, hit somebody, and get this win, this much needed win, because we need it. And uh, But like I say, be alert, be sound, and uh, don't let the devil devour you. That's all I got. Hey, coming to you live from Studio G in Hickman, Tennessee, I'm Rusty B. And this is Paul Martin, and you're in the huddle. Hut, hut, hut. All right. Paul back for another week. Another big win for the Blue. What do you think about that? I seen some improvements Friday night. Uh, we, You and I, we challenged the, uh, the DBs to get more aggressive and play with the Cujo spirit, and Friday night... They, uh, we see some big hits out there. Bill Washer literally hit one kid in the ribs and dislodged that ball, so made old Paul Martin proud. Yeah, our secondary really stepped up. They didn't let us down. And, you know, I, I still think that was a, a pretty big part of, of winning that game. You know, we did give up a touchdown pass there in the end zone. Somebody got caught. Essentially, nobody was open, and, you know, you got to play till the whistle blows. And I think maybe they just let that kid slip by him and run run back across the end zone. So until uh, that whistle blows, you got to keep going. And you know that really put them in a position that um, gave them an opportunity. So the secondary did did a whole lot better job um, this week. Of course, Joe Burns not known for throwing it all over the field. But we, but when they did throw it, we got an interception. Then dislodged the ball or two, and, and really stepped in there. And Who had the interception? That, that was, was Dalton uh, Stallings Dalton again. Well, how many has he got on the year? Two, two or three. three? I know he's got two, three at least. I think. Uh, but anyhow, he really stepped in and played the role yeah, really well. He's doing good. Where where I think our weak point was the other night was uh, the ends. The yes, that that end. is correct. And, and it really is not all on the defensive ends because they were fighting to get outside. You could see it. I think what uh, I think what we're gonna have to do to adjust to that is our linebackers are gonna have to go go pinch down and get and get in the hole a lot quicker and what and once we do that well, we can uh, when they try to can, hit the corners uh, you gotta string get there and stop it a lot quicker. You gotta string that play out. Now the defensive end's job is to fight to the outside. That means if he's gotta run and he can't give ground, but he's gotta get to the outside to try to cut that guy in or at least not keep his outside arm free. That's his job. But that linebacker is so when you, toward you that cut play, him back, though. you cut him back so that the linebacker essentially is there, if that makes sense. And right, and it's his job you know, we to, were, to we were go creating, toward the ball. What was happening is our defensive ends were trying to get out there. And, of course, half the time, if you look at the film, they're being held most of the time. And that, that was uh, – you know, not making any excuses, but if you go back and look at the video, they're getting held on almost every play when they're trying to fight to the outside. And that linebacker has got to be there waiting. That you know, and you're absolutely right. I mean, I mean, uh, he's got to be uh, fighting down toward the ball carrier. And 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 we seen on one play that our linebacker was taking steps back toward the middle, and then he essentially just took himself right out of the play because yeah. he he was going the wrong way. Well. What what happens is basically you got five, you got your uh, your down linemen and your ends, and then you got your linebackers, and they're all in a gap. What happens when that ball is strung out to the left or strung out to the right is that whole line needs to move, uh, basically horizontally. You know what I'm talking about? And you and if any of those gaps increase in distance, then there's a hole. You're so, right. Essentially, they have to move as a team back and forth to the left and to the right. So it's not always just the end. He's just the leader of the pack when it comes to getting to that. He has got to be ready to cut him back in. And I'm going. But, I'm going to go ahead. And you know, make they a didn't play terrible, but we let them get to the edge there several times, and and you know, then that puts your cornerbacks in a spot where they have to make an open field tackle, and that's one of the hardest things in football there is to do. And I don't care 
how many I don't care if the kid is an excellent running back or a terrible running back, tackling in open field is hard to do. So you kind of put your uh, teammates back against the wall. But for going into the next week, Friday, I want to see I want to see more aggression out of our linebackers. I want them to read the play, and the minute they see that sweep or that uh, that little uh, yeah. round the corner play coming, I want them I want them crashing down to the line of scrimmage, meeting that guy as soon as, as soon as they see it. Don't yeah. don't hesitate. Don't take a step back. Well, crash down and make the play. Next week's gonna be a different ball game, and uh, we'll talk about that coming up. Right. Uh, but I, as we play to, these teams, we're talking about our corner to corner. I want to see more attacking. We're talking about our secondary linebackers and our front, our down linemen. Uh, they're about to be challenged. And like I said, we'll talk about that coming up. But, you know, I thought all in all, we played a pretty good ball game. And we actually had to play for four quarters and not quit. Right. Um, we had one touchdown get called back on a holding. Which it was a hold. And we, looked we at did the look at it. It was a hold. And I think that – it wasn't necessary, though. Well, a lot of times you don't know what's necessary and what's not because you don't see the runner behind you. But essentially, you can't hold. Now, here's the thing. We've got a running back that whether you're holding or, holding or not, let's just, let's just say this. We got caught holding in a situation where we didn't need to be holding. It wasn't necessary because our running back was already by the play by two yards but, but i tell you what i think's happening when you're though, when you're in the trenches you don't really see that i tell you what i think's happening i think well if the play play is designed to go maybe up the middle and he cuts it back against the grain they're just automatically wanting to block up the middle and they're thinking that he might need that extra hole and then they're, yeah. they're holding somebody to, I'm gonna to, throw, to make up for the cutback i'm gonna throw something else out there out there at you when and and We've seen this time and time again this season. I'm no uh, professional football analyst or whatever. Right. But I do know this. When we're in the spread formation, we get a shotgun, we tend to get more holding calls out of that formation than we do if we line up in an I formation. And, and the reason why, I really don't know, but I think it's got a lot to do with timing and how quick you hit the hole. Now, the, as far as the running game, the reason I formation works is because you got guards pulling, you know, blocking fullback. Yeah, you got guards pulling, which is a less of a chance to get caught holding. Right? You can still get caught. And we have, but essentially you take away a lot of the timing of holding calls. You see what I'm saying? When you're standing there in shotgun formation and you're spread out a little bit, uh, you know, the defense sees where the ball's going, he's gonna try to fight that way. And if you're not squared up on him, you got your hands inside, you're going to get called for it. And essentially, there's holding on almost every play in football. It's just whether you get caught, you know, and how bad it looks. So, I, I tend to think that we should, I mean, we've said it all season, stay in high formation. But you do want to give some different looks to some other teams, especially down the road, something maybe they hadn't seen. Uh, throw it at them. What do you think? Yeah, I agree with you. I got I got a couple of things that I want to I want to get in on this segment though. First of all, the first thing of my two things I want to get in. Well, I see I you want, smiling. I know something was the up. The first thing I want to do is I want to give uh, I want to give Coach Marshall some credit. Coach Marshall is one of the best defensive adjusters that I have seen in the game. Cause I tell you what he did, and and I and I tell you what one of the kids told me he done. All right, so so because I asked him, I said, uh, "Y'all seem like y'all play a lot better in the second half. Y'all seem like uh, uh, y'all cut that edge run off, and they didn't. Yeah. Get, it, it just was non-existent." What, what did the coach? Uh, what he do? And, and uh, he said, "Well, he at the half he he made some adjustments for the defensive end so to keep them from getting outside, and uh, uh, and it, they just didn't get outside anymore. So I want to give yeah. props to Coach Marshall for making the right adjustments and keeping those kids from getting around the corners as easy." You know, I've said this the last couple of years, and I believe it. He's uh, a good adjuster. Not not only a good adjuster, defensively, I think he's pro- possibly the best defensive coach that Gorns was ever had. Um, de- defensively is where, if you look back last year, the first time we was shut out trials in a long time, and that was all based on defensive end play and defensive coaching. And he's got um, two shutouts this year. Well, He's taking some kids that have never never really been in game situations 
and you know, a lot the most of those, out of these kids. A lot of those kids, and it takes some time to work on some kids. Oh, I say, well, you got all year. Well, not really. You know, you've got just a month, maybe not even a month's practice before you you go out and play your first game in pads. And, you know, there's some things that you really need to work on. Tackling drills, stuff like that. I mean, so how, how many times do you actually show a kid how to tackle? I mean, it's a lot of it is in, it's like chess. You know, defense, defensive football is a lot like a chess game and a good chess player can tell you that defense is the main part of the game in chess. Uh, you got to defend the queen, right? And essentially, Paul, you getting a booty call? Nah, it ain't no big deal. Not going to worry about it. I, I ain't going to worry I about it. I wouldn't worry about it. But, uh, uh, she's probably not that hot anyway. Right. But essentially, football is like the game of chess. And, I, and, you know, I got all the faith in the world in Marshall's defense. If you look at last year, um, we had a kid that got tossed from a football game that – you know, if he's not tossed from that game, I think we're in a good position to win that football game. Um, look at the score. They had scored how many points on everybody all season. It was up in the 40s. Yeah. And most of the time, the game was over by the half. And they, when we went in the locker room, they was up 6-3. to three. Yeah, I mean, we, we had a three-point deficit. So, I mean, essentially, uh, we could have went in with a 3 nothing lead. You know, so it's just one of them things that defense is a big part of the game. And, you know, we, we kind of struggle. We've struggled more in the secondary this year than we have in the past. But we don't have the the speed, maybe some of the speed that we've had in the past. But you know. got it, it's just, you know, it's. But you know as well as I do because you probably played a little bit of corner in your career, didn't you? You know, Paul, I've told you, I've played a little bit everywhere. I played on the line of scrimmage. I played. Uh, did you play any corner I, though? I played corner. I sure did. Well, you know, uh, you know. Essentially, I got I got moved to uh, strong safety, and that's where I stayed for the latter part of my high school career. Well, I ne- I never actually I never actually played any corner or safety myself. Most time I played nose guard, or actually all the time I played nose guard when I was on defense. But but I know. I know from backyard football days that when you're when you're covering somebody, uh, that first step is the most important the most important part of covering him. You've got to you've got to uh, you've got to cut his route off, and you've got to go with him step for step and uh, defend it. And well, if you make if you make a bad first step, essentially you already beat. A lot of that depends on whether you're in what they call a bump and run, which we call we always call it cover two, and basically the cornerbacks are always pass first, and. You know, if that guy goes out for a pass, you better go with him if you're in a man coverage. Now, when I played, we played a lot of zone coverage, all right? Our cornerbacks would take the shit, not, not necessarily the flats, but the little the next deeper zone. Safeties, we had, each of them had half of the field, the strong safety and the free safety. And, you know, that's how we played it. Defensive ends on some plays would go out and pass coverage and cover the flats. So, as a strong safety, I played a lot of, uh, we would use our corner to roll back instead of instead of using uh, the two safety deal, the weak side corner would cover half of the field. Does that make sense? Essentially becoming a safety. And then your strong safety, which was playing four yards off the line of scrimmage, would essentially become the cornerback and play that zone. But we don't play a lot of zone. We play a lot of man coverage. Well, let me let me ask you this: for 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 a team that's uh, maybe had trouble like we have uh, defending passes over the year, what kind of advice would you give these kids? Like say say they may be outmatched right. on speed. What kind if, of advice if would coach, you give them? If coach, if you're Berg, the coach for saying, I've got a defense. I've got a witness to this right here. The best defense that I ever played, not not on, not personally, but. As on, a corner, on NCAA right? football. All right, we're going back to the old NCAA football days on PlayStation. All right, the best defense that you could run was it quarters? No, no. It was called a cloud nine. All right. And how does this work for mm-hmm. the for the ones that never played the game? You can ask my old buddy Speck Mason. We once challenged Paul. We challenged one of the top players in the world on NCAA online. And Speck run the offense, and I run the defense, and we got beat three to nothing. For the for <laughs> game, I give up three points, and we got we ended up getting beat. But Speck was in the he was in the red zone, just couldn't quite punch her in. But you the cloud defense? the cloud nine defense. You was on defense. Essentially, on this was a 
it was a zone defense, right? But you really didn't have that many people to attack the quarterback. And I've always said I like to attack the quarterback. Uh, get to him and get How to him off. How many linemen you got this clear now, nine? Uh, I think he just had three. But I think we were, it was mainly like a 3-4 defense. Um uh, and, and most of them was in covering. most of them was in a zone covers. Now, uh, the the strategy on this is ninety percent of the people online, ninety five percent of them would throw the football all over the field. That's what they want to do. They didn't care nothing about running it. So, so if you're playing a pass, <laughs> this will work. Well, it just puts everybody in a zone, a little bubble, and the only thing you got to watch is the deep ball and make sure they don't get past your safeties. So right? more Even or less, you, you got eight a, guys covering, right? Yeah, I mean, giving up one short pass, a five-yard pass, and then if they're not going to run it, uh, and they get an incomplete pass, because they're not going to complete every one of them, then they're still in a uh, third and five or something. You see what I'm getting at? So, the the best defense for me personally, my favorite defense, Cloud Nine. That's what I like to call the Cloud Nine. And you got nine people in basically in coverage. The defensive ends covering the flats. But you you almost have to uh, take into consideration this high school football at the 1A level. They're going to run the football. Now, Jackson County. They're just, a little different. <laughs> they're they're going to try to spread it, spread it out. So, we might bring the cloud nine gonna, out, right? They're going to hand out and they're going to hand the ball off. Uh, but, yeah, I do I do think you're going to see some defensive ends in pass coverage next week. But let, let me uh, uh, let me ask you this though: for a team that likes to run the ball, could you cheat your safeties up to the line of scrimmage and maybe bring a safety blitz to tear up the run? You know, if they're going to run the ball, because uh, like and Joe, they, Joe Burns was running most of the night, the night could we have actually brought our safety up and stopped well, the outside run? If you're stopping the run, there's no need in doing that. If you're not giving up terrible yards, I'm talking about on the first few drives when they's getting around the corner pretty easy because we have brought our safeties up. You can, but as soon as they see you doing that, they're gonna hit you over the top, or at least I am. I don't know what other offensive coordinators would do, but um, essentially, what what we did at Joe Burns, even after halftime, like I said, our defensive ends were they were working their butt off to stay to the outside. So, I think maybe Coach Marshall challenged him. Look, you've got to make some adjustments. You have got to get to the outside. He did. They he, were he running. Worked, he worked on the defensive ends at the half and adjusted so they could, wouldn't get that outside run, and they didn't Yeah. So in the second half. Uh, essentially, that, that stopped them and slowed them down a whole lot. Yeah, his adjustments. So, so. I mean, when, when you look back at that game, we probably could have scored there at the end. Uh, Braxton, he had another good night running the football, as always. But you know what? It looked like Pope and Vault and a couple of those guys at, at you know, uh, it, it looked like Pope was mowing the grass with that one kid. Just get his hand. Look, he was pushing a lawnmower all over the <laughs> field because they really, they really put got some holes opened up for him. And you don't have to get a big giant hole for that kid to squeeze through. He's going to get there. There was a couple times when he, you know. Um, running in the middle that in between you know behind the guards that he had to bounce it to the outside um but when they're crashing in you know they they know we're gonna run the football so and you and you kind of have to be aware of that and jackson county they know we're gonna run the football just same as joe burns did and the team that we play after that they know we're gonna run the football because how many is braxton up to now Braxton is up to 1,565 yards, good for third in the state. Third in the state. And he's, still, only, he's only 21 yards behind out of first. So. Is he still leading single A, though? He's got to be. We'll look that up here in a little while. maybe. But we'll anyhow, third in the state, uh, 1,565, and yep. the leader's got 1,586. That's pretty good. That's so pretty he's tight. third. And but, another thing I want to bring up. You know, he carried the ball how many times? 39? 39 times for 248 That's a lot of carries. yards. That's a lot of carries, but, 248. you know, uh, I think that kid would carry it 50 if you gave it to him. He's that kind of a kid. He wants to carry the football. Let him tote the mail. Uh, and another thing, a few weeks ago, a few weeks ago going into the moderate game, uh, I had a chat on Facebook with, uh, with Mr. Adam Goosby. I said, you know, kid, 
you, it's time for you and I to sit down and have a little chat. So uh, uh, so we sat down, we had a little chat, and I said, you know, kid, I believe in you, and I, and, and, and you got you got to take the role of the general, and you got to be the general of your team. It's time for you to stand in the pocket, be tough, and make make clean throws and get you some touchdown passes because we need them, and, and I believe in you, and I know you can do it. And last three games – He's up to five touchdown passes, so I, I think the chat really helped well, maybe, that kid. Maybe he's coming around. But uh, we'll give but, Paul Martin all the credit for that touchdown pass of the night because we know I was hollering. I was hollering uh, mustard stand, mustard stand, because that's the play I called it uh, to the hot dog man. To the hot dog man. I'm not giving you no more hot dogs for touchdown passes. Right. We're right. over that hump. Right, because uh, because but, I've done talk. I've done had a chat with the quarterback, and you know I finally got him to in a rhythm where he well, feels good about throwing them. Adam Adam throw the football. It's just um, sometimes you struggle. You go in what they call a, a sophomore slump, and, you know, essentially he's not a sophomore, but it's his second year starting. And But you have to say last kinda, week, you have to say last week, you said if we can get our X Factor, Adam, to play him well, we can win a lot more ball games, and we got Adam yeah. to throw that touchdown pass, he's, and he come out of the slump. He's throwing the ball a little better. Um, he's making the improvement. The pass the other night need. I actually thought was overthrown to Bill, and Bill run right under it. Um, like I said, I think sometimes maybe there's a little too much air under it, but what do I know? I never. That's the one position I never played. Quarterback. Quarterback. Never played quarterback. And, you know, when you look back at the teams of the past that Gornsville uh, – That could throw the ball pretty good? You know, honestly, with the exception of maybe Jonathan Bush and uh, – I don't know who's the little Dillingham when you played. Dillingham played. Blake. Blake. You know, they could throw the football pretty good. But the passing game still wasn't the main strength of the of the football team. Um, even when when Coach Bush whatever was playing football, we we run the football. And we've never really been what you call we a, a throw first team, have we? No, 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 no. Um, and we've never really had those uh, what you would call you superstar know, we've had like quarterbacks that most throw of the, it all over most the field. Of the team, most of the time that we had great football, what I consider a great football team at one A. We had a quarterback that could run the football. And, you know. And Adam's starting to come around slowly. He's starting yeah, to get to where he can run I'm talking about running a little bit of speed option, stuff like that. And Adam's just not built for that. But he can get a carry every um, once in a while and pick the up one a thing, yards. Yeah. The one thing that, that I think is kind of making it tough on Adam is we really have very few short yardage pass routes that we run. We run a lot of deep routes. And, you know, he throws a deep ball all right. But. Those those uh, routes across the middle, uh, we just hadn't seen those. The the out routes, the simple curl routes, you know, and that that's what other teams have been doing to us. They back off the line of scrimmage and give us a few yards, and we ought to take advantage of that. So, but essentially, they're going to be up to the line of scrimmage simply because we're running team. But like like we say, we but, need to be able to throw the football a little bit, just take a little bit of pressure yeah. off of Braxton so and I, give him a breather. Exactly. But I think some of the, the pass routes uh, could be what's hindering Adams throwing percentage because if you look at it, most of the time you look back, we've thrown the deep ball. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna have to uh say though that we don't really need a lot of passing out of Adam because I think we threw like three passes the other night. One of them, one of them got roughing a pit passer penalty call, which was essentially a 15 yard completion. Was essentially a touchdown. And, and, then, and then another that, one, that, another that one was a 35 right? yard touchdown. And uh, the, and then he had one incompletion that he overthrew everybody, which wasn't a bad move because it didn't get intercepted because nobody it was in the area. Yeah. So I mean. Well, so essentially, the, he had two completions out of three passes, basically counting the penalty that the yardage. Old, the old theory is on third and long. If you throw the ball deep and they pick it off, it's not a terrible. It's thing. like a punt. It's like a short punt in some cases, a long punt. Unless they take uh, it all the way, but you got to get down there and tackle them like you that's would right. on a kick so, turn. I mean, it's still uh, one of them things. But not uh, a not a terrible plan to throw it on third and long. So you you don't argue with throwing the deep ball, but when it's first and ten. Or second and five, and we need five yards. Why not run that out route? You know, those right. are the the little bit easier passes to complete, I think. And still, you know, we just hadn't run those. And I and I wouldn't go as far as to say we couldn't put a uh, little Adam Brinkley in there and run a little curl route because Adam can catch. Yeah, we have several kids that can catch football. Adam can catch it, and he wants to catch it. And that's the thing yeah. you got to look for kids that want to catch football. And we, I'm I'm sure we got several kids that fit that 
uh, criteria. Oh. Wanting to catch it. And, you know, they're going to bust their tail to catch football. So. But essentially, though, all, 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 I, all I expect out of Adam each week, if I was the coach, I'm going to put myself in a coaching Coach Martin. Position. I'm going to put myself in a coaching position. If I'm the coach, I'm going to go to Adam and I'm going to say, I'll tell you what I want you to do. We got a we got a big old line, and we and we and I feel like we can push this team around. But we're gonna have to give Braxton just a little bit of breather every once in a while. So I tell you what I want you to do: if you can throw, if you can promise old Coach Martin, you can throw one touchdown pass the game. Old Coach Martin will let you fire about three passes. But that's all I need out of you. Just well, go out there, go out there, and make me three good passes, and and I'm and and the rest of the game, I'll just let you hand it off and and look pretty. I see where you're going with that, but, but three three passes is. <laughs> Not going to give Braxton a, that big of a break. But the three passes, oh. the three passes uh, also lets us run the football, which we do well. Now, but when we do throw those three passes, if we pick the right time to do it when everybody's loading the box, then we're going to have success with our three passes. You can breathe. You can use punctuation. Put a sentence, a period in that sentence and t- stop and get your breath before you pass out on me. I'm not you was turning out. blue. You was turning blue and I thought you was going to fall. But listen, here's the thing. I like, running I like, teams, so I like three the passes idea. Also helps us not throw interceptions, and it helps Adam not have the pressure to feel like he's got to do well, it all. When you got a running game like we got, you don't have to be able to throw that many passes, but you do need to throw some that you can complete. Because most of the time, when you're in a passing situation, it's a have to situation. But you or could get a rough in the pen- passer penalty too, like we you did. You can't last rely week. on that ever. I mean, how often do you get those? Not too often, but here's the thing I really like that we did is we brought in uh, was it Washer, Scotch and Washer come in, and Maybe you know he got a, he got a couple carries. Um, I, if that I, kid ever gets loose in open field, he's going to shine. I listened to the stats during the game. Uh, Scotch and he he backed up for four carries, fifteen yards. So yeah, I mean he, he come in for four carries, and, and Adam Adam had I think four carries for five yards. So I cool. mean. Uh, Goosby did get a five yard rushing night, but yeah. that's not really what he does though. And he had he was he was one for three for thirty five yards and and a touchdown. Yeah. So so not, see that thirty five yards and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna beg to say that that touchdown pass to Bill was probably the play of the game because it's what turned the whole game in her favor. So yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and say that play was the play of the game. But regardless. Uh, we just got to keep doing what we're doing and do it well. Uh, defensively, we've been playing good against the run. You know, we did let them hit the corner a couple times, but we put a stop to it. Um, as far as our offense goes, we're more of a grind-the-clock-out kind of offense. And, you know, I really like that. I do too. I mean, I mean, it's at the end of the games, at the end of the games, just uh, take your time. Take your time. Use, use all of your uh, – Use all of your shot clock, so to speak, if this was basketball. And and Coach uh, Coach G did it did a good job of that the other night. He used the clock. He, he knew they didn't have no timeouts, and I knew yeah. they didn't have no timeouts because I'd been paying attention. So I was hollering, "Work the clock! Work the clock! Work the clock!" They ain't got no timeouts. The only thing I didn't like is after, you know, they they got a little dirty there in the fourth quarter with with Braxton, and they did what they did was totally uncalled for. I don't like that. To play football, you got to be a little mean, though, sometimes. But you don't go and in a huddle and try to break somebody's leg. I'm going to tell you something, Paul. When he's down. I'm, I'm just going to tell you something. And it could have been done to avoid confrontation and getting kids kicked out of the game because some of them boys got some fight in them. Um, I know it's demoralizing when you're getting three yards, pounding, pounding away, getting three to four yards of carry on the defense, and they can't stop you. And that's essentially what happened. I mean, we – uh, broke their wheel. <laughs> they, they could not stop it. And it was just making them mad. And, you know, the little player that did it and got tossed from the game, he'll be sitting out, what, next week? Yeah. I don't know how what the rule is, a game or two. He was Jacob Barnhart. He was uh, their, uh, one of their big gun running backs. Yeah. And, of course, they've got a region game coming up this week. So, he didn't, do nothing, he didn't do nothing but hurt his team, essentially, because he was a good ball player. Had a bad attitude, but a good ball player. And it just demoralized him with the band playing that little whatever kind of war march it is when you uh, 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 <laughs> We get a hold of the name of that song, Paul, we'll put it on the show. Boom, 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 right, right. As boom, preacher as Mighty Martin's coming boom, in, Preacher boom, Paul. Boom, 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 boom. Mm, mm, 
that's mm, enough of that. But mm, 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 mm. regardless, I'm gonna have to cut, I might have to cut your microphone off. Anyhow, um, but essentially, that's demoralizing to a defense, and you know. Them not being able to stop us on them three and four yards, getting in third and three or third and two or whatever, and just keep pounding it away, it, it'll demoralize you. And when he done what he done, we're on a twelve yard line. I'm gonna give him. I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna ask uh, little Braxton. I know he had thirty nine carries, which is plenty. But after they do that to you, get a little dirty. I'm gonna ask him if he wants to carry it one more time and just you know. Let that kid run over somebody one more time because that it's just uncalled for what they did, what that kid did. And I don't know. I, I, I don't I don't disagree with taking a knee, but I'm a fighter uh, when you make me mad. You know, I try not to get mad often, but when you make me mad, I'm going to try to ram it down your throat. And that's all there is to it. And old Rudy Kalis, he come in flying on uh, on the uh, on the News Channel Four airplane and uh, uh, the airplane and uh, got to run first. And, and first thing everybody said, they they posted this on Facebook. <laughs> they landed on the runway. They was like, "Oh no, here comes Rudy. Bad luck always ha- follows the Tigers when Rudy comes to town." Yeah. But I tell well, you what, I tell you what I done though. I went down there and I shook the man's hand. And I reversed that curse. So Actually, he in you good didn't shape. because uh, we did beat. I think Tollfield in 2012, and there was another team. SL Pitt. Of course, I know, I remember at one of those games it wasn't Rudy that actually came. There was actually two new stations. Hmm. Um, the Coalfield game was they they actually had a news team out of Knoxville that was there. I'm almost I'm almost 100 percent on that. Uh, they didn't fly in; they drove the van. I remember it, and then. Uh, South Pitt, somebody Fox, in. Fox uh, 17 had somebody there at one point in, during one of those games. So, it's not always Rudy's fault if we lose, but I do remember in the early 2000s, late 90s, early 2000s, there was a stretch when Rudy would show up. We never won. And Don't he showed up. Who playing. I remember him showing up twice in one season. I think we were playing Friendship, and they beat the fool out of us. And shouldn't have, you know. And it was just it was the Rudy. Rudy, chink, so Rudy was bad luck back then. But maybe so, that's changed. Maybe the next so many times he comes, we'll get a streak of win. Maybe and beg the guy to come back. Maybe, maybe it's turned around. Maybe. But uh, regardless, I don't think it had anything to do with Rudy. We just you got to show up and play football. And sometimes when those helicopters land, it just draws a little attention away from the game, and your attention span goes away for just a few minutes and. Maybe that was you know, the case, but once but, we got it back, we was all right. When you look back at, at the over the all season, every game we've played, we've never really started off that hot. Now, we started off good against Carthage initially on that first drive, took it down and scored, which, you know, we, we f- thought we had to do to win that football game, and it just kind of – Essentially, though, that was – let them even, get ahead of us. Essentially, though, that wasn't even our opening game. Our opening game was Watertown, yeah. and we don't even want to talk about that. Well, I think the game plan for Watertown just uh, – it didn't suit us. I think maybe we should have been in the I formation running the football. And i tell you something. i tell you something. That's something going into next year that I want to see changed. We, uh, do you realize that we have not won an opening game of the year since probably, I don't know, a uh, long time. It's been a long time since the Gornsville Tigers have won an opening game the Bush, of the year. Was it the Bush administration? Probably 2004, 2005. It's probably been a good 10 years anyway since yeah. the Tigers have won well, I don't know an opening game year. and won their first game of the year. Yeah. But next for as going into next year, that's what well, I want to see. I want to see us start. win that opening game. It ain't how you start. It's how you finish. But starting yeah. off fast sure helps, though. It makes you feel good about the whole season, right? I guess. I'd rather finish strong than start strong. Just my opinion. Well, but um, I like breaking streaks, though. Yeah. Well, anyway, we got a we got a big win against Joe Burns, and it was huge as far as uh, region region playoff brackets coming up. We're going to kind of break that down a little bit for you coming up in the next segment. Uh, we're going to take a quick commercial break. Anything you'd like to add on Joe Burns? They're a dirty bunch. Braxton, player of the game, he got the defensive or the DTC 
player of the player game. Player of the game. You know, they had a little interview. But, with him. I, but I think he ought to split that ball in half and give the rest of it to his old line because they, cause they, they deserve it. <laughs> they were mowing. I'm telling you, they were bush hogging out there, whatever you call it. They were bush hogging. Uh, knocking them down and blazing a trail. I, I would. I probably wouldn't go as far as to say that the old line don't deserve the ball, the whole ball, because uh, without them, he wouldn't have had those holes. Yeah, you're right. But you know, Braxton still he, that first but guy he did hardly ever tackles good yards. Though. The first guy hardly ever tackles him, which is something to be said. Um, because if they did, we'd probably be looking at a losing season right now. In all honesty, uh, Braxton's earned a lot of what he's got. Those fifteen hundred something yards, he's he's actually earned those. He's almost up to his personal best. What was his personal best last year? He had fifteen ninety. We thought maybe, uh, buddy, but he's he's gonna go way over that. I hope so. I'd like to see him uh, eclipse that. He will. But anyway, we're gonna take a little commercial yeah, we'll, break, and, and we'll get back and talk some uh, Blue Devil football with you uh, here on the in the huddle dot com studio. G. Uh, you don't even know what you're saying. Let me just let me whatever. Play. We'll rest. We'll you, right we'll do it. Hut hut. Hi, man. Right now, Bun here. Uh, gonna tell y'all about my latest business venture. Don't know whether y'all know it or not, man, but uh, one time, uh, at one time, in one point in my life, I was uh, abducted. I got abducted by some aliens and uh, really changed my life for the better. Uh, learned a lot of cool uh, uh, stuff up there and learned a lot. I learned a whole new language, man. Uh, a lot of clicking noises uh, is involved in that language. Really hard to understand, but uh, learned a lot. Uh, gonna, gonna promote uh, my new agency, the Alien Abduction Insurance Agency. And what really got me going on this, man, I got to thinking, you know, if I'd have had some insurance, everybody's wanting to talk about insurance these days. And it's uh, right now open enrollment for insurance that you don't even need. And, uh, you know, but go ahead and get it anyway. Uh, government's going to mandate this for long, especially in places like uh, trailer parks and stuff like that. Uh, going to be forced to buy it. Uh, but open enrollment goes through uh, right now until like December uh, 31st or something other. Uh, I'm going to give you a good deal on some alien reduction insurance. It's going to cover all kind of stuff. I'm telling you, this insurance is out of this world. Uh, it's just... Uh, a good stuff if you get abducted by aliens and they bring you back you know when they bring you back you're gonna be covered we're gonna take care of all that and all your financial needs uh while they's gone see what happened to me was uh got got abducted missed a trailer payment tried to come repo it then took the block and stuff out my under time i got back you know and i finally got that took care of uh, but don't want that to happen to nobody else. Uh, you get a lifetime premium for nineteen ninety five. Just uh, PayPal that right on over to Reno Buns Alien Abduction Insurance Agency if you need that. Hey, don't leave Earth without it, man. I'm telling you, it's good stuff. Uh, everybody's got insurance for everything these days, man. You can never have enough. Uh, insurance gonna cover everything except you know maybe natural disasters and floods and stuff like that uh, we're not gonna cover all that unnecessary stuff but all the stuff that you know uh, can be controlled uh, we're gonna cover that like I had an abduction insurance you gonna need that uh, coming up on Halloween by the time I've got abducted you know uh, so just keep that in mind we're coming up on that dark time of year uh, you gonna need this stuff but uh, remember, your lifetime premium, uh, open open enrollment, nineteen ninety five, uh, called Reno Buns, and uh, you gonna do that? Say, so shoot me a text message, tell me you need some insurance, six one five four eight nine, uh, 05, or o uh five six seven. Yeah, that's it. So just call me up, uh, text me, shoot me a text, uh, something like that. You know. It really helps if you can get the picture of the alien, but if you don't, don't worry about it. We cover that, too. Uh, going back to insurances and why you need it. You know, Santa Claus that's in that Macy's uh, Thanksgiving parade up there at Macy's has his beard insured. Now, just, you know, in case it gets, you know, he goes to the barber, falls asleep in a chair, and the barber lops it off, it's covered. Right? Uh just, you know, in case he loses his job. But now they make him fake beards look just good as a real beard because, uh, you know, I've been trying to grow one, and I think about just buying me a fake and, you know, 
the the rage is beards these days. So if you don't have a uh, beard insurance, uh, go out there and get it too while you're at it. I'm sure it's pretty cheap. Uh, in case Don Todd lops your beard off when you fall asleep or maybe get drunk and pass out in his chair, you know. Uh, speaking of that call, uh, six eight three sixty twelve. Todd's hair design. Uh, tell him, tell him you'll split the insurance money with him. You know if he chops your beard off. So, uh, you know maybe a good way to, to swindle somebody some money and 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 do this. But anyway, call six one five four eight nine zero five six seven for all of your alien abduction insurance needs. And I'm gonna let you boys get back at it. Welcome back to In the Huddle. Uh, we're getting ready to talk some Blue Devil football. We're going to talk Tiger football. Tiger football playing the Blue Devil That's football. That's right. We talk Tiger football. We don't talk about the Blue Devils. We're getting ready to talk some Tiger hope, football playing I Blue hope, Devils. I hope we're talking about how we beat the Blue Devils next week in the first segment. Right. Uh, Jackson County, we've seen them a little bit on film. First off, let's explain this non-region game. Doesn't That's really, correct. Doesn't really count for a whole lot. Win or lose, it's not going to affect the playoffs for us. Right? It's not going to affect the playoffs. You're absolutely right. But but kids, don't don't let that don't let that discourage your confidence. We're because just, we're not we're not by any means saying we want exactly. you to go out there Friday night and lose this game. We're just saying you've got nothing to, nothing to lose by going out there and playing hard. Except another loss. Except another game. But it, essentially, uh, go out here and let it loose. Have fun and play football. You know, when when you're playing in some of those situations like last week at Joe Burns, uh, playing them, you get a little tensed up. You know, you got to perform, and, and that's always good. But when you play a team like Jackson County, you can go out there and have a little fun and open up the playbook a little bit. Uh, maybe do some things you hadn't done. So that, you know, uh, essentially, kind of like a picket county when you got a lead, you, you practice a few things you need to work on. So, but I still say we stick to the main game plan for the most part, running the football, and then open it up a little bit. That's my opinion. I mean, I mean, he. Everybody I, else may. I mean, I'm gonna disagree with him. Uh, I mean, because I think, I think this, I think this is another game we need to win because we've got a streak now of four wins in a row, and we don't want to lose our streak and lose By our momentum. Means, I'm not saying I hope we lose the football game. We we need to keep this momentum. <laughs> I'm just going saying. and build a bigger momentum. That we're going into Salina. That way we're playing our best football when it matters. I mean, we don't want to. We don't want to feel like this is a game where we can take off and just play around yeah. and and it don't matter because this is another another week of football where you have an opportunity to uh to get better and get ready for two weeks when it matters most but we'll we'll talk about that then but you need to be playing your best football you don't need to be taking weeks off is what i'm trying to say i didn't ever say we was going to take a week off i said go out there and have fun and do you know get a little excited about playing football and that'll lead to and, a win anyway and if you get to, uh you get to do something besides uh you know, just three yards in a cloud of dust, you get the opportunity to open it up a little bit. That's what I'm saying. And practice throwing without it, stuff. Without it coming back to haunt you. Oh. Uh, but that is correct. But regardless, we got to play football. And I expect to win. I always do. I don't care if we're out there having fun or whatever. I expect to win. And winning's fun. But um, Jackson County is going to throw – going to try to throw a little hitch in our plan because – They've got nothing to lose also. And you know what they're going to do, Paul? They're going to throw the ball about 80% of the time. <laughs> they're going to throw the football. So our secondary had better be ready. Now you're going to see a lot of uh, basically a, a, a read option, the quarterback and halfback, or you're going to see a lot of the little play action where he fakes it to him and just stands up and throws the football. And not they don't just throw the football down the field. They throw it quick. They're going, they're going to run a lot of quick screens. You're they're going to see run a lot the, of hitches and, and uh, curls you're, you're and going to see this the, short stuff. The tight end over the middle. You're going, you're going to see that for a while. I mean, you're going to see that two, three, four times. Uh, if it's there, they're going to keep hitting it. So and the bottom line is uh, – Our secondary will be challenged. My, my game plan on a team like this, watch the screen because we've seen a lot of screens on film. Watch the screen. Go jump it if you can. And this could be a prime opportunity as much as they're going to throw it for us to get that first pick six I've been waiting on. Paul's dying for a pick six. I'd like to see it. And this is going to be an opportunity because we're going to have plenty of chances to get one, ain't we? Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Um, they're going to throw the football. I think that. And, and they're not a 1A football team either. They're like 2A, so that so this yeah. is a bigger school. So so uh, this ain't your traditional single-A team. They're, they're 2A, and in 2A, you, you see know, a lot of teams throw the ball the, around. The quarterback is uh, fairly athletic. He's an athletic kid. So, so this ain't going to be an easy win by a long yeah. shot. And they got to earn it. They got three or four kids that can catch football. Their line is not little. They got some big kids. Um, I think where we beat them, and and I think maybe the weight room is a, a key to this. It's going to be a key to this victory is up front. I mean, them big guys up front working out, I think we're stronger than they are. Because when we were watching them, they really wasn't blowing people off the ball. They were playing some, some weaker teams, and they're not really blowing them off the ball. Of course, a lot of times they're pass blocking. And pass blocking itself is kind of challenging, but they, that's all they do. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they're going to pass block a lot. So they're going to be good at it. So you got to be quick off the ball on defense. My key to, to beating a passing team is trying to kill the quarterback. Now, when they're throwing the ball within, what, a couple seconds after they snap the ball. Because they run a lot of screens and curls and all those short rounds. Time and time again. They're going to run that screen. They're going to hit, they're going to throw a quick pass. So, essentially, not giving you time to get back there. So, your cloud nine may be the way to go. I think cloud because, nine would be the way to go. Because uh, cause chances are them getting rid of it in two seconds, our pass rush ain't going to have a chance to get to him because he's getting rid of it so quick. We're just going to have to back up him and uh, go for the pick six. Now, I didn't. Uh-huh. one thing I didn't see is any receivers that, were, that would need double teaming. You know, they don't have the superstar receivers. I don't think they're as good as the Smith County receivers that we've seen. Right. But they're going to catch the football. And they're going to just uh, – Five to seven yard you to death if they can. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what my key to the game is, and this might sound stupid to a lot of people. It probably will, but go ahead. But my key to the game is we need to use the offense to set up the defense, if you know what I mean. And, and what I mean by that, kids, is uh, you need to go on long twenty play drive scores where their where their defense out, and if if they've got a lot of the same kids going both ways, they which do. they probably do, then if you've got these kids wore out, their pass passing might not be as strong for wore out because they may be too tired to run the route. So, yeah. uh, so we need to go on long drives, wear them out, eat the clock up. And uh, I think we'll be successful if we can go on them big, long 20-play drives and wear them out. Those those long drives, they will demoralize a team. Granted, you don't ever win by a whole lot in the end. You're not going to rack up a, a three or four touchdown. But you don't have to. Uh, big trees a whole lot of times. You don't have to. Unless you play a team that can't score that well. And – we know Jackson County. We've seen them. They've, they've scored some points this year, a few points. But the the lower amount of drives that we can force them to have, the better chance we got of winning because uh, they're not going to be able to throw the ball around if we're killing. I mean, we went – and we won time of possession the other night by far because we yeah. took the ball. On one of our drives, we took the ball with about one minute and 15 seconds to go in the first quarter, and we drove the clock all the way down to three minutes and 27 seconds of the second quarter. So, essentially, we went on about a 10-minute drive. So, if we can go on those 10-minute, 20-play drives and march the clock off, we might hold them to like four possessions, maybe five. You know what I mean? And that gives us an edge. To me, I love that style of football. I love time Uh, of possession-based football. It's just – you see this fast-paced stuff, and each team gets ten possessions a game. I don't, you know, I like to control the cut football. It, cut it in half. Let them have four or five. Well, it's kind of like playing pool. I like to take my time and control the table. And you can't lose control of the of the field, so to speak. And when you're in control of it, it's when you have the football and you're driving. Just a slow, sustained drive is what I, I love to see that. I don't care if it takes 20 minutes to score. Me neither, because, I mean, the more time you've got it, if you cut the game in half and take their possessions away from them, that is a good defense. And if you do it, if you do it, in a, you know, what do you got to play clock, 35 seconds or so? In Probably. So, so, get up, so, so, so get up there and take your time. Yeah, you don't have to snap the ball with – if you get a play called, you don't have to snap it with 20 to go. Snap it with about three. Take your time, let your running back take a few breaths, you know. Um Braxton, I'll say this the other night, and you could tell he was kind of – he's one of these kids, you're not going to wear him plumb out. 
You know, uh, I, you know, one of our fans, uh, they told me, they, they said they hollered at the coach there once and said, take a timeout, coach. He's gassed. Give him about a, thir- a few a- extra seconds to catch his breath. So yeah. so he calls a timeout, and that's not a bad strategy when you look at him and he's a little bit winded to yeah. call a timeout and give well, him you a can, few extra seconds to breathe. One thing I can say about that kid, he might get tired, but he will not quit. No. And he, you know. <laughs> If you hand him the ball again, he's going to try his best to run it. No, he ain't going to quit. I don't care, no I don't quit care in if you hit kid. him in the nuts or if you twist his ankle or what you do. He'll crawl to the daggum end zone fiesta. I promise you, that kid's a, he is a fighter to the end. And, you know, uh, we got a lot of kids that, that got a lot of fight in them. You know, I'm, but, I might go as far as to say that that is the toughest kid that I've ever witnessed uh, play in. He's pretty and, tough. And I've watched, a, I've watched a lot of football players in my 20 years watching football, but – uh, he's a tough hombre. Yeah, he's one. He's one tough kid. Uh, he'll grind it to the end. I promise you. If he can only get three yards, he's going to get three and a half. He's going to do his best to get three and a half. That's just, you know, that's the way the kid is. He'll be several times he was hitting the backfield, and he turned those plays. He's hitting the backfield into four yards, and that's a lot yeah. of fight. So, it's like I said earlier. Those fifteen hundred yards, he's earned a lot of those. Right, earned them. Um, and like I said, you're, I don't think you're going to – you might tire him out a little bit, but if you give him a break for 45 seconds to a minute, and he's going to be ready to go again. And yeah. that's just the way he is. Uh, he's in good shape. And you that's where we, that. we got Skyshin and even giving the ball to yeah. uh, to uh, uh, Stallings a few players to uh, – we, we've got like three guys right there we could feed the ball to and give him a little breather. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I like I like the strategy of putting Skyshin in there with Braxton in the backfield because then it you know who gets the football and it throws another kink in the defensive plan. You take you take Braxton, put him on sideline, then essentially it makes it a whole lot easier for them. You but know. if you go split backs every once in a while and you got Braxton and Skyson both beside the quarterback, yeah. and then then he could give it to either one of them and they don't know who's going to get it. Yeah, but like I said, you don't want to. I don't think you're going to tire Braxton out too often. The other night, going to one of them drives, I think they had – essentially what happened, they went three and out and kicked the ball right back to us, and Braxton goes right back in, he's getting the football again, and uh, two good drives like that, and you'll kind of wear a kid out. And that's why I'm saying you don't you don't have to use um, just 15 seconds off a 35-second play clock. You can use 20 of it. You know, use 25 seconds of it. Just work and, and let him get a, a little breather. Not only just for your running back, it helps your linemen because they're, you know, they're gas too by the end of a drive sometimes. But, you know, they're in pretty good shape. You can tell that because those are – it's very exhausting. But it's twice as hard on the defense. I've said it before. It's twice as hard on the defense on long drive than it is the offense uh, because they know what's coming. They know what they got to do. Defense is still their mind has to work, and that's what happens when you get tired. Your mind quits working, so you see that a lot on a them three play, three yard plays we were getting at the end that that they couldn't uh, stop us. It's demoralizing, and you know I think with uh, Jackson County, if we don't control the clock, they're and just say they go um, throw a few passes, incomplete passes, the clock stops. Uh, that just gives them more time to throw more passes if you don't sustain a drive. So sometimes those passing games take a long time. What you got on your mind? You're smiling. I'm getting about ready to tell the, you guys about the uh, pause analogy of the week because it's about time for pause analogy of the week. Last week we talked about Cujo. Right. I got a different one for you this week, a different analogy. Uh, let me guess. Beethoven. No, no. No, no more dog movies. No, uh, they're the blue All right, devils. go ahead. All right. All right, so the analogy this week, uh, last week you played the fire-breathing dragons uh, of the red devils. This week you're playing the water-breathing dragons. These 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 devils, they, they spit out water, so you ain't really got to be afraid of them. So i tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to make you an analogy to what you're going to have to do to be successful Friday night. You're going to have to go into the water and you're going to have to attack these water-breathing drip devils, and you're going to have to sink their ship like the Titanic. So, so let's go sink their ship because I mean, they're not they're not immovable and they're not unbendable, but they're uh, they can they can be sunk because the great Titanic that nobody said could be sunk is sunk. It's sunk. So uh, go, sunk. let's go sink let's go sink the Blue Devils and and. 
take their ship under Tiger Tourney Ford Field. Tourney Ford Field. Well, Paul, um, over the next couple of weeks, we got uh, possibly a region championship game coming up. We know it's coming. So far, it's between us and Clay County. Right. And Clay County is uh, what's their record? Uh, they're five and three overall. And uh, they're five and three overall. They have and they're, one uh, loss in the region. Right? They're uh, three and one, four and one, maybe in the region. Okay. So yeah, they got one loss. So uh, I was thinking they were three and one in the region and had two region games left. I'm not sure, but yeah, but anyhow, uh, the uh, the point is we have to beat them to win the region. There's no way around it. We have to beat them. So I'm gonna pull uh, up the, in a couple uh, weeks. Uh, that's a big game. It's it's a must win game for us. Yeah. So you know we we got a region championship coming up, and just some of the playoff scenarios that we come up with. We we took in uh, we took the liberty of filling out a little bracket and. Uh, Basically, we went to the TWSAA website, downloaded the tiebreaker rules, and went through a lot of those. And there's still some spots that are up for grabs, and some of them is not going to be right. But for the most part, we've got our region pretty much figured out if we beat Clay County. Now, pending we lose to Clay County, we would finish second. And then Clay County would, be- would win the region. Then Joe Burns would be third or yeah third and monterey fourth if no i i, I thought clay you county said, I thought you up. said uh if it goes like that then monterey goes monterey third would be third joe burns fourth cause yes monterey because beat them. because monterey beat joe burns yeah. that's what i meant to say but essentially the way it stands if we win we would finish first in a region. And be playing Lookout Valley. And more than likely Lookout Valley will be coming to Gornsville first round of the playoffs. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull this up here. It's, it takes me just a second here. All right. This is the the way we kind of have it figured. And we could be wrong. But in uh, Region 1, first place, we'll play fourth place in Region 2, which is Cloudland. And they're either going to be Midway, Oliver Springs, or Sunbright. Now, that, that whole region could be... The two, three, and four spots could be up for grabs. And maybe Harriman's still in it, too. We don't Harriman, know. if Harriman wins out, they still lose out, I believe, is what we determine. Because Sunbright would then get the tiebreaker. We'll just have to wait and see how that goes with all yeah. that. But, but as far as her region goes, we we're going to see one of those teams going to Cloudland. We will, as far as our region, we will either be playing Lookout Valley or Copper well, Basin. I'm going I'm to kind of crawl down through here. Now, you've got Coalfield, who is region two, number two, who got beat by Green Greenback in a shootout in the fourth quarter. They had Greenback down 27 points, or 20, yeah. 27 points. 26 points, and they scored 27 to come back and beat them 34-33 in the That's last correct. quarter. In the last quarter. And Coalfield has a good ball team, a really good ball. They got a good quarterback that's up for Mr. Football, and he's going to be a a good good run, a good uh, quarterback, and a challenge to whoever has to play right here. So I, I really predict Coalfield is going to be sitting right here in this spot against uh, one of these teams, possibly Greenback again. So they could get to see each other again. And I think if they do, Coalfield win. I think Coalfield will win. That's my opinion. Of course, you've got Hancock County finished uh, third in Region 1. That's who's going to play Coalfield off the bat. Of course, Midway and Oliver Springs. Uh, and Sunbright and all of them. Well, they're, Midway and Oliver Springs are the only two that have a shot at a third uh, third place finish. Um, the fourth place, you know, all that's up for grabs. And I'm going to go out on them and say when Midway plays to Oliver Springs, you'll see Midway win, which Rusty yeah. disagrees. But I'm going to say I'm Midway thinking wins. Oliver Springs is going to go number two. I think they're going to be the number two slot. Uh, just my opinion. You mean number three? Number three slot, yeah. But anyway, that one of those two teams will be playing Jellico. And that region one – has already been determined. They have no more region games left. It's only a five-team region. What seeding is Jellico? You get teams. Jellico's the number two seed, meaning they got beat by Cloudland. And, you know, they're in a four or five – I think it's a five-team region. 
So only one of those teams don't make the playoffs. So Jellico's essentially got a pretty good football team. Eh, possible. I mean, you really don't know because of the teams they've had to compete against. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, Unica Rangers will be going to play the Greenback Cherokees. And Unica is not too good. They're not too good. So, I really expect to see Greenback and Coalfield out here matching it up. Now, moving on to our region, we got South Pitt. And the way it, if everything goes as as me and Paul have planned it. Uh, They'll be playing know, Monterey. We win the region. It's just a prediction. South Pitt would play Monterey. Joe Burns would, go, uh, would play Copper Basin at home. So, Joe Burns would be the home team in that. Clay County would then go to Whitwell, and then Lookout Valley would come to Gornsville. And if our plan goes by the wayside, you could probably take this right here and swap this and this to uh, right here. So we would still get a home field advantage in the first round at least, but it changes who who we would play on down the road if pending a win. So, but regardless, you, you're going to have to go through your Wetwoods and your South Pits to get to the. That's right. The road's going to go through road. South Pit or Wetwood. And if you get and past really, if you get past South Pit, then more likely it's going to go through your Coalfield or your Greenback or whatever. On down the road. I'm going to predict Coalfield. That's just my prediction so, right now. But they will have to play and, at Greenback though, due to the fact that they lost to Greenback. That game would be in Greenback. Now down here in. Uh, we got a region that basically sits strategically on the map, sits underneath us down at, uh, you go down the lower end and start on 840 and you start going south. Then you hit some of these 1A schools like Cornersville and Fayetteville, Moore County, Mount Pleasant. And essentially what they did from last year is just flip us back to the east, the northern part of this region of the mid-state, flip us back to the east and all these teams went west. Right, so who, who's the number one seed out of all that? Columbia Academy? No, Cornersville. <laughs> And they're going to play who? They will be more than likely playing Hollow Rock Brewston, which is the team we played last year yeah. in the first round. Who, Cornersville? Cornersville. Well, who's Moore County matched up with? Uh, Moore County will be playing Wayne County or Collinwood. That game still hadn't – they're going to play to determine uh, – Is Huntington also in that region? Or Huntington, Huntington in that Huntington, bracket? Huntington is going to win that region. They're a number one seed um, too, ain't they? I think they've already pretty much got it on lock. They're down. undefeated, aren't they? They'll be playing Mount Pleasant. And Mount Pleasant ain't no easy game because Mount Pleasant can play some good ball. They, they're they number four seed, but they don't have a terrible football team. For a four. Uh, Moore County, we actually seen them play some football, so we know they're fairly decent. But it course, has Jackson County made the playoffs? Um, you know, I don't know. I hadn't got anything but single A worked right. out. I don't really don't know because I, I wanted to look at that for Smith County and all that. All right, but anyway, you'll have Cornersville hosting Brewston. Wayne County or Collinwood will be hosting Fayetteville. And then Wayne County or Collinwood will be traveling to Moore County. Isn't Columbia so, Academy in there somewhere? No, I think all those things with academies and all oh, that. They're, they're, they're like the division two they've schools already or whatever. Switched. Yes. Uh, uh, essentially, the TSSAA hasn't forced them to go to Division two, but the rules are making it to where they're better off going to Division two. It's basically like a forced. What about Dresden? Is Dresden still one We're eight? getting there. We're getting there. So, Dresden is still 1A. They're in Region 7, and they're going to win that region. And they're going to play, more than likely, Memphis Middle College. Now, I didn't do a whole lot of study on these right here. I just kind of took them for the way they were. Hillcrest, Freedom Prep, Westwood. And I do think the Hillcrest is going to win that region. But this third and fourth slot could be up for grabs. So, Dresden will play Memphis Middle College. Westwood will play West Carroll at home. Lake County will host Freedom Prep, and then uh, Hillcrest. Is Milan still in it, 1A? Uh, Milan's 2 or 3A. Oh, they moved up? Yeah, they're, they're not there anymore. But Greenfield or South Fulton, whoever gets that uh, number four spot in Region 7 will be playing Hillcrest. And I'm going to go out on the limb here, and I'm actually going to put uh, Hillcrest and Dresden playing, and possibly a Lake County because they don't have a bad football team. So, if I were to move on out here, I would probably put Huntington. And, uh, I don't know, I really think Collinwood's going to beat Wayne County. Don't hold me to that, but I just, just looking at their scores and going back over all the 
numbers. Of course, that's like a Gordonsville Carthage game with two single A schools that are in the same region six miles apart. They're big rivals. So that game gets hated every year. A good one to watch if, if you uh, happen Live to be down there in, some more. If you happen to be in Wayne, Wayne County or Collinwood, go watch that football game because it's going to be a good one. And like I said, I expect to uh, – I, I do suspect that we'll be playing Whitwell. And I think that will be a home game. Because it goes the, the second round goes the highest seeded team, right? Correct, and so, and uh, uh, we'll be we'll be playing Whitwell round two, and if everything and goes, got a really good football team, if everything goes as the way me and Paul have it planned, Whitwell will be coming to Gornsville for the first time ever, maybe. I don't remember no Whitwell games. I never remember remember having. Have, I don't know ever remember playing Whitwell. Now I do know this: they went to Trouser County. And was it? At, no, it was at Whitwell. That game was at Whitwell. Was it at Whitwell? Yeah. And, and Whitwell, was Whitwell squeaked out a 17-14 win in Whitwell. Yeah. So, so they're, so they're, uh, they're beatable. Yeah, they've got a, they got a fairly good ball team. Now, of course, you look back at our Charles County score, I think that was a little um, more lopsided than it should have been. When we got down inside the 20 and started throwing the football and just bad things happened and didn't go our way. But if you're still following along right here, I want you to click over to this page now. We're going to show uh, Mighty Martin and his debut on TV. Don't let him get on the corners, he said. Let's just take that back one more time. Your television debut. Uh... The feisty fan, Paul Martin. <laughs> you know, I can't tell you how many times I've watched this. And uh, old Mighty Martin, the feisty fan, Paul. You know, Rudy come down there and had a little conversation when you said he had, they had put the camera on you and interviewed him. And, and then you get on TV on News Channel 4 and you got, what, three seconds of fame? Yeah. Instead of 15 or 20? Yeah. What did he ask you when you were down there? Just out of he asked me. He said, uh, "What's the keys for the Tigers to to win?" I said, "We got to cut them off, and not let them get on the corners." And, and uh, as, you know, you were right. And and then I told him, I said, "We just got to hit the quarterback, get off the field on third down, and get the ball back, and, and drive it down their throat." And he yeah. said, "Not a bad plan. Not, not a bad, a bad plan." plan. Uh, anyway, old Paul, his, his television debut. You should have thrown in our sponsor, Gornsville Drugs. You should have brought up in the huddle. Well, he didn't put me on there but three seconds, so I couldn't say much <laughs> You should have at seconds. least thrown it out there, Paul. What if he'd have got me in there with the cheerleaders? Then I oh, could've... why did it have to be with the cheerleaders? So I could have time to speak. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, big night. Uh, we got we got filmed. Uh, Rudy come. We got the win, and uh, now we're moving on to Jackson County, and we hope to get another win. Did you and... TVO it? Did you record it? I couldn't, but I but I, can, I got it recorded. But I can go back anytime and look you at want it. to watch it. Just I can go over. back and look at it any anytime I want to on, on computer yeah. and everything. But uh, yeah, I mean it was a we we hope to win more ball games and and you know I I know you kids you you kids you absolutely love this show because uh, two you or three of you because two or three of you come off the field last week and said thank you for your support and always coming to all the games and and I just love your show so uh, <laughs> well that's good and I just want to let y'all know I love doing the show for you guys because it's it's just no place I'd rather it's, be it's on the highlight night. of Paul's week it, it, it does I mean I enjoy I mean, it myself it does I mean when I when I shoot the in the huddle it makes my whole day. Uh, positive, but when I when yeah. I don't shoot in the huddle, I get kind of sad and gloomy. And, and he bugs me to death until I get it uploaded. That's correct. Essentially, we have to do a little bit of editing because the, the, maybe we can explain the way this works, Paul, and why why we do it the way we do it. All right, uh, explain uh, it to him why it takes him so long. In case you're in case you're uh, new to the show, this set right here, we're just going to explain it to him. This set right here is totally fake. All right. Uh, we just kind of drew this up in Photoshop. This picture's real, by the way. Uh, and this picture's real. And essentially, we use what they call a green screen. And Paul had mentioned getting the, all the cheerleaders one belt in the huddle. Mm -hmm. Well, we're in a room that probably Paul could reach over and touch this wall and possibly this wall. 
you know, so we're not in a very big space. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't go. intend for you to try it, but there you go. Paul can go out of it. the screen at any moment. Stand up, Paul. And 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 essentially, that's did as, I go out of it? That's as big as our screen will get. Did I get out of it? Or, yeah, you did. You can sit back down now, buddy. But, um, you know, we got some tight tolerances in here. I'd love to get the cheerleaders on here, but. What we, we really do, don't have the room, though. You're right. Well, maybe maybe one or two at a time. You know, we could get them over here and do a little cheer or something. You know, uh, maybe help pump up the crowd. I really want to thank the band. That last drive just gets me pumped up when when we were going on that last drive and they're playing the old. I don't know what kind of war march that is. Somebody, please, please tell us what the if name you know of the, the name of that is. is. Tell us so we can tell us. We're what gonna listen to that the whole way home at the next ball game. Well, that'll be Jackson County. But if we go to Salina, we'll listen to it the whole way home. Somebody we'll, tell us what this... Mm, we'll just record the mm, band doing it. Mm, 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 yeah, there you go. Dun, dun, That's dun, enough. Dun, dun. That's enough. That, tell us what that uh, theme is. Regardless, we got uh, the set here, and we can move things around and change things like this right here with the click of a button. We can kind of make Paul bigger. Um, and, and we just got a lot of things we can do here. But so, really... Uh, it takes time to do all this because we we have to we have to record our show, then we have to edit it, edit it, then we have to put it on YouTube, and all this stuff takes time. And then after we do all that, we can finally put it on Facebook and, and YouTube and everything for you guys right. to enjoy it. But it takes time. It's not it's not just a snap of the fingers, we're done kind of thing. Yeah, we can we can do a few things like move. Uh Paul Martin out of the way. Let me go ahead and do this right here. And we can just change the way this whole set looks. Just like that. And we can put the desk way up here on top and put Paul way down here in the bottom of the screen. <laughs> uh, but we can we can do uh, a lot of things. So maybe y'all y'all have some ideas. Let's just put Paul way up here floating. And uh, let's go ahead and move him down just a little bit. I'm going to show them what I got going on here. We could take uh, the desk here. It's actually a separate element. And we can just essentially have Paul float in midair. You know, and, and there's a lot of things that you don't see with the green screen that we just kind of hide. Um, we could bring in uh, Reno Bun's picture and just put it up here in the top right and cover me up completely, uh, which probably wouldn't be a bad deal. <laughs> and, uh, you know we could we can do lots of things with this so if you got any ideas for the set uh, we, we really want to see Tigger on the set you know you think maybe you could pull that off for us Paul maybe see if we could get a Tigger to come in here and sit down on the set with us well, if you're if you're trying to think for me to put the suit on, it's that's sort of well. Like, I'm thinking maybe Tigger could come in and visit you. Well, that would work if somebody else comes in wearing the suit, but I think I'm a little too uh, uh, you health, mean, health wise to wear it, and I'd probably have a heat stroke or something. It'd be a little too think? hot, but for my size, it'd probably be a little too hot. But <laughs> if any of you guys, if any of you guys want to come in the Tigger suit and, and sit on set with us, uh, we would like to have the the Gornful Tiger on set with us. That way, <laughs> yeah. we can uh, we can have. Uh, Paul and, and, and the Tiger kind of that's right going together but uh, we got a lot of we got a lot of things we can do here on the set to change a few things around but we really don't have a whole lot of room and what m most people don't know is we film this at midnight when you know when I've got nothing else going on that's correct that's the reason <laughs> I just did a yawn yeah so it's, it's 12 35 a.m. and uh you know, maybe during some of the screenshots, you can see the time of whenever I had the computer showing up. Uh, we do this late at night. That's correct, because uh, if we do it during the day, we get hot and sweaty, and it's just miserable. But yeah. if we do it at night, it's cooler, and uh, things just go a lot smoother. Uh, when's the Halloween episode? Will that well, be coming up? Well, that would probably be the game of the Salina week, because we're playing them on the 27th, so that would probably be your Halloween episode next week. If you hadn't been here for a Halloween episode, you're really missing out, because we dressed Paul Martin up in uh, some kind of outfit every year. Last year, you were what, an astronaut? I was an astronaut, which I, I'm not wearing that thing no more, because that, that's hard yeah. for me to breathe in that. But, but you know, I tell you, I tell you what... Uh, 
We actually changed the whole set last year. Another thing people may not understand, I've I, you know I've said it before. Something else, our our, our, our church hayride is in uh, the last. It's gonna be it's gonna be the Saturday after the Salina game, the church hayride, October the twenty eighth. Uh, so I'm sure there will be some creatures coming out of the woods again. Yeah. <laughs> Let me. Uh, I'm just gonna try to do something here real quick. When when did you say the hayride was? October twenty eighth. That'll be the night after the Salina after the Salina game. After the Salina game, so we're going to dress you up. You got any ideas for Halloween costume? Well, not really, but uh, I figured you being the producer, you'd think up of something. You know, I really don't have many ideas on that. Um, we could come up with something. I was trying to find maybe a. Uh, hmm. The background that we actually used for our Halloween episode, and we just kind of changed it around. So, so this year for Halloween, are you going to do that same stuff you did last year, like a little a little Halloween egg Halloween egg uh, uh, episode where the winner of the whoever can find the egg uh, maybe will get uh, we might can do something we'll like get that. like a little present or something. This is what we had last year. So Paul was in the astronaut outfit sitting here, and of course we had the little alien. And, of course, this is a lot brighter. And a lot of people didn't see it, and they kept bringing it out, and I kept brightening it, brightening up the picture a little bit just so they could finally see it. And this is always in the background of this picture, even though you may not ever see it. But if you see the legend turning forward right here, oh, he's always watching over us in the, in the huddle. He watches every episode. So uh, be like Turney and tune in. That's right. And bring your popcorn because it's going to be it's another be show, show Friday night. Friday night. Going to home, turning Ford Field. That's right. And, 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 uh, and on the episode, somebody said, we're going down to Jackson County. And they said, you might be, but I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to stay at Tuna 34. <laughs> That's right. So <laughs> They said, I'm not going to Jackson County. <laughs> anyway, maybe we'll come up with something next week, Halloween episode after, right. after the next week. And uh, mm -hmm. we'll come up with a whole new set. We're going to rebuild it in there. That's right. So, we. That's right. My friend over here, the producer, Mr. Burton, needs to put us a Halloween theme uh, set. We yeah. need a Halloween theme set. We'll get it going. That way, that way, maybe, uh, maybe for the Bulldogs, uh, we can have them. Uh, we can have maybe like a full moon over the over the tourney forward, and uh, maybe like a full moon, and maybe some bats flying over, and just just get the we'll Halloween theme. Something. We'll come up with something. And maybe, maybe we can, maybe in our set, we can actually put some uh, uh, balloons and some Halloweeny stuff in in the set. You think? Yeah. Maybe a ghost. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we'll see you next week. We told you a little bit about our show and how we changed uh, stuff around and how quick we can do it. Uh, Thanks for watching in the huddle. We we'll, uh, uh, stay tuned next week, and and we'll be back. Then support our sponsor, Cornwall Drugs. That's right. Uh, you know. If if you ain't never been there before, Amy's Drugs. Uh, uh, it's, if you it's, need some Cornwall shirts, hats, I mean, she knives or just any memorabilia. Yeah. Yeah. Some hemorrhoid cream. You know, you could go to Amy's Drugs. She'll fix you right up. Cornwall Drugs. Right, Cornwall Drugs. All right, we'll tune in next week. Bring uh, your popcorn. Gonna be a week. show. That's right. Don't spill it in the floor.